Okay, hello, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to Easy Markets Daily Pitch International with me, that is Unchauskas. Today is the 18th of May, 2023. So yeah, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Thursday's morning session. Uh, where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff basically. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation uh, and should not be considered as such. This material should not be taken as an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. Look, I'll disappear here from that little left corner in there and I'll give you uh, some time to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so um, now then, let's get back on track. Um, before we go actually into the charts, as always, just a quick uh, reminder of our Easy Markets uh, website, which you can always check out for more information about us, guys. If you have any questions, then drop us a message, uh, give us a ring, um, whatever you feel more comfortable with. But um, yeah, if you have any questions, as always, you can reach out to us, you can reach out to me, and uh, we'll try to answer all your questions. If not, we'll search for the answer. But anyway, guys, uh, look, uh, I think you can find some useful information here. So about trading, about our conditions. So just kind of feel free to explore that. Without any further ado, uh, let's jump into the charts, guys. The first one I want to pick up here is, as always, Nikkei 225. Oh, and by the way, just to let you know, because uh, before we go further, uh, there won't be any uh, daily pitch uh, tomorrow. Uh, we'll resume on Monday. Um, yeah, just uh, just wanted to let you know, but I'll I'll mention that at the end of this video as well. So uh, look, uh, Nikkei two two five, beautiful rally, beautiful move in general. My target got reached. I'm very very happy about it. And boom, thirty thousand six hundred sixty zone got reached. That was the uh, that is the highest point of September of twenty twenty one. The highest point of twenty twenty one is just slightly above that area i think let me just put this on the chart um where's my magnet there we go uh there we go so uh the area yes around uh near the 30,000 30, that's the highest point in a way of, of 2021 so uh we kind of stalled below that so in general i'm going to keep an eye on this uh, key important resistance barrier uh let me just uh do this a little bit here i want to squeeze something in here now uh, let's reuse this highlighted territory um we can recycle it guys always recycle um yep uh, looking at this picture here you can see that yes we reached a fantastic barrier here look nikkei uh jumped uh strongly uh it's kind of a i think it was more of a follow-up to the um, good positive positive activity in the u.s yesterday uh we did get some data today as well i think that the uh, trade balance improved of ja the japanese trade balance improved and yep uh this kind of also you know uh, kind of contributed to this nice beautiful uh rally and where my area finally got reached I'm quite happy about it. So now what's next? Basically, uh, now the, the question is, can we actually continue this momentum to the upside? But for that, given the sharp move already, maybe a bit of a retracement could be possible. But again, mm, I don't want to rush into anything. Look, what could happen here as well is that if we do push through this highlighted territory, through this key resistance barrier, um, but we fail to stay 
above it, then yes, that's where more, uh, maybe that's where the sellers could pick up, you know, like maybe drag this one a bit to the downside for a bit of a retracement. Uh, yeah, could be a nice good uh, idea, but I would say at this point, guys, if you've missed this, look, I've talked about Nikkei about, from around here. I said that we're going to go slowly to the upside, ideally aiming for the, the 30,000 mark, but if that gets clear, then, well, we have these levels right there. Well, we've reached those, so congratulations to everybody who was under, on, on jumping in here. Uh, wonderful. Uh, like I said, I've, men I have, I've mentioned this last week uh, on Nikkei, so well, I'm quite happy how this worked out. Now, uh, like I said, from now on, um, let's see, keep an eye on this highlighted zone. If this provides good resistance, then yes, uh, um, you know, a bit of a correction here back down could be possible. And this is when I will go in with my Fibonacci levels that I really like. So, but at this point, then we'll, we'll aim for that 23.6, 38.2 and so on and so on. But um, for now, we want to see first what's going to happen here. Will we actually clear this territory and stay above it or actually will continue trading below it? Um, ASX 200. So this one's a little bit of a mess. Um, look, I, I've drawn these lines here, these trend lines. I think I have to admit that this is, didn't, didn't really work out nicely. It's OK. It has to go. Um, the other thing I think think that maybe just maybe we can actually stick to this little territory so um, if you're looking for some upside basically a break of this downside line and a push up of the 7300 territory would be ideal uh in order to start shifting our views to the upside for the downside a drop below the 7200 territory would be needed so then we could see a move towards the 200 day ema and uh if that gets cleared then yes uh further declines are possible simple analysis on asx 200 guys um in general uh we did get some data from australia by the way uh we did get some un unemployment numbers uh from australia that didn't show up very well um 3.7 yep again uh, against the forecasted 3.5 um, and the previous 3.5 as well. So it increased the unemployment rate increased uh, employment changed uh, in employment change uh moved into negative territory because the forecast was for 25k um the previous one adjusted was 61.1k and yeah it just dropped to minus 4.3k um yeah and i think that yeah participation rate the same stayed the same but anyway basically bad data and we're seeing here a push higher well this can be explained by the fact that maybe um maybe the uh the market is now expecting saying that oh maybe you know the the bank uh the rba were, is not gonna you know uh increase rates and you know this way because we have such bad numbers and we need to stimulate the economy so you know maybe we're not gonna go with the with the 25 basis point another 25 basis point increase but Again, time will tell. I would say don't rush into anything for now. Just keep an eye on it. And uh, let's, uh, like I said, for now, it's just ranging. I, I like That's why I'm going to stick to these levels here in order to do something about it. India's Nifty 50, guys. Um, look, a bunch of arrows are, are a little bit in the way. Um, yeah, those... Um, those need to be adjusted very quickly. Just bear with me one moment. So in general, I want to be very careful here because this upside line, I do like it still. Um, I talked about this when I talked about Nifty 50. In general, look, the idea worked out because I said to you that if we do push through this barrier, this 13,000, oh, sorry, 18,342, which is the, which, sorry, was the previous highest point of this year, we've created a new high. Uh, my next target was around this 18,519 level. We didn't really reach that exactly, but came very close to it. Um, and then drifted back to the downside. So let me just remove, shift these arrows a little bit to the side here. I'm, I might reuse them. So at this point, what you can do here is with Nifty 50 is that basically keep your eyes on this upside line. Mm, um, in a way, um, more selling could come in, um, but I think that uh, look, for now, we're getting a hold up near this 18,267, and uh, which has been seen as a good area of resistance previously. Now it's taken the role of support. So um, will this 
continue to the downside, we need to see um, not only like this false breakout that we had yesterday, but um, like actually we need to see a nice good move here, a nice good drop below this upside line and staying below it in order to go further south. By, by further south, I mean the 50 day EMA for now. Uh, for the upside, well, uh, this is where the tricky bit comes in. I think that this level can go and it can be redrawn. I can take this 18,483 level as now as a good potential uh, barrier for the upside. Um, and if we do clear it, then yes, I will, I will go a little bit higher, I think, because... Uh, this is for me right now the obstacle for the upside. If we clear that, then yes, like I said, I'll get a little bit more excited with further upside. Um, yeah, anyway, uh, I think I repeated myself a little bit here, but anyway. Uh, NASDAQ, guys, NASDAQ, looking at the picture here. Okay, beautiful move, beautiful push. I talked about this and I said that if we do climb above that uh, 13,500 territory and we stay above it, then yes, I'll go further north. And so far, so good. Yesterday, we got that little rally. So let's see what if we can get that further rally today. And uh, today, in terms of economic data, we do get the Philly Fed Manufacturing Index. Um, that one is expected to improve. Um, well, the expectation is still for the number to remain in negative territory because the previous one is minus point uh, minus 31.3 the expectation is for a minus 19.8 let's see which way that's going to come out because it because yesterday i think we had some data as well not maybe in too significant one but uh, building permits housing start housing starts were good building permits went a little bit on the downside but still okay ish um and the market yes and the market put, pumped a little bit higher this brought look at this the the 50 the 25 basis point uh probability for a 25 basis point increase during the next meeting it lifted it a little bit so this is what i kept on saying guys for this whole week keep your eyes on this because um basically yes it was at low everybody's talking about no rate hikes and yes might be the case however I think that what's going to happen here we're going to go back all the way towards the 50 percent maybe before maybe even at some point we will jump above uh the 50 50 you know percent mark and we'll be higher than the uh, no rate hike uh, column here so you know it's it's always a drama it's always like the debt ceiling right i mean it's always a drama everybody likes a bit of drama you need some drama um you know and somebody likes it somebody doesn't but you know this keeps the market uh, like a nice uh, soap opera basically so uh, at the moment look okay it's rising and look the fact that the indices uh, pushed a little bit to the upside does yes, that that kind of gave that uh, you know a boost to this column right here for a 25 basis point increase because again you know if the markets are starting to start will start feeling well and good then yeah that's you know that might keep the 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 fed kind of a little bit on the hawkish side however again we can speculate as much as we want let's wait and see because we have a bunch of data to come out before the 14th of june uh we will have again unemployment we'll have again uh, cpi so yeah kind of just you know, just let's wait and see. Um, but anyway, coming back to this picture here, look, I'm still aiming for the upside. My next target is the 13,740 territory, just to let you know what that level is. That's the highest point of, uh, is that August? Uh, yeah, that's the highest point of August, basically. Um, yeah, true. Uh, yeah, that's the highest point of August. There we go. So that's the highest point of August of 2022, guys. I think I initially I thought it was the highest point of 2022, but no. We uh, have this somewhere around here, basically. Yeah, this is still somewhere there. The highest point of 2022 was around here, I think. Yeah, let me just double check. Let me just double check. Uh, no, even, um, yeah, I think it's going to be even this. There we go. That's the highest point. Yeah, there we go. That's the highest point of, of 2022. 16,563 or 64, approximately around there, guys. I mean, you can see how much more room we have here. But, okay. I'm not saying that this is what we're going to do. We're going to reach that. No, but um, just to consider the fact that we are 
um, still kind of well below all the all-time highs here, which were reached back in uh, 2021. Uh, so that's why for now, I would say a long story short, I would like to wait. Uh, I'm going to just in terms of the long-term analysis, you know, from the short-term perspective, it's going to be a little bit easier. So that's why I'm going to stick to that, guys. Uh, and yeah, I'm just going to aim for that 13,740 territory. And then we will go from there. Um, in terms of the downside, now previously yesterday, I talked about this little hurdle here. I mean, this upper side of the range, the previous range. And by the way, look, I, I talked about this before. I said to if we break this, then yes, this opens the door to some higher levels. Well, this is what it did exactly. So uh, now the question is, can we break this upside line? If we break the upside line, yes, I'll go a little bit lower. Uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, beautiful rebound. Look at this. Uh, I talked about this idea of a descending triangle, but again, I said to you guys, wait for a clearance of this territory. And this is exactly why. Look at this sharp reversal. If you started short selling somewhere around here already, you probably got very, very frustrated. And that's the reason why I said to you, wait for this hurdle. Uh, wait for that 33,000 mark to break. If we get that, then yes, more uh, sellers could join in. Well, we saw a reversal back to the upside with a test of the upper side of the descending triangle pattern. Can we get that break above it? And uh, can we get a push above the 33,562? Let's wait and see because at the same, I'll get a little bit more bullish on that one because... If we clear this, this area previously acted as a good area of resistance, then support, then resistance again. And uh, yeah, if we do clear that, then we would also be placed above all of the EMAs on um, my daily chart here. And potentially that could attract more buyers. Uh, the S&P 500, also beautiful push. Look, everything's so far so good. Yesterday, I kept on talking about this. I said that as long as we stay above the 50, above all of the EMAs here, especially the 50-day EMA, then yes, we could still aim higher. And uh, my next target will be this 4,173 territory. But I need to see a break of that area in order to go higher uh, a little bit to the upside. So far, we're, you know, if we're finding good resistance here. Let's wait and see. Um, DAX, the German index, uh, finally some sort of activity. But look, I'm still I'm giving everything and, you know, I'm keeping an element of doubt here. So basically what I would like to see is um, I would like to see this 16,000 and 0, uh, 16,063 territory continuing to uh, be uh, to, or to act as a as a support level, because as you can see, we've broken it. OK, that's the first step towards higher levels. But can we remain above that? Well, that's a good question because it, currently we're falling back below it. So let's let's um, let's continue on observing the carefully observing the situation here, because again, yes, I'm cautiously bullish. I'm maybe leaning even a little bit more towards the upside, but uh, yeah, that's the that's the first good step. Let's see if this can continue. Uh, US sex to uh, US sex uh, USD, which is the DXY. And look, so far so good. Uh, we reached my target. My target was this 100 day EMA. I talked about this in the beginning of this week. Um, and yeah, I said to you then previously that if we push through it, uh, my next target is the 200 day EMA, and then we'll we'll go from there guys uh for now yes that's the game plan let's uh let's see how this is going to play out for the downside i would like to see a drop back below the two 102 territory right here and at the same time we would fall below uh all the emas here on my daily chart um right oh oh by the way um yesterday uh it, again on my on my previous video yesterday's video under the video uh, there was a comment from uh navid four three four Four three four three. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your comment, guy. Uh, I really appreciate that. Thank you. It means really a lot. So uh, yes. So yeah, just wanted to say that, guy. I mean, nothing, you know, nothing major, but uh, just I mean, major for me. But thank you very much for that. Honestly, you you know, really really appreciate that. Um, look. Now then, jumping further here, uh, gold uh, gold can, did drop nicely here below that uh, upside line, below that 50-day EMA. And the question is now, can we go further south? Well, to be honest, at the moment, I will, yes, stick to the downside. Um, I will stick to the downside because, again, uh, this territory right here um, got violated. And for now, we continue to trade below the 50-day EMA. And we, if we continue to trade below that, uh, then yes, um, um, 
and below this upside line, then yes, like I said, yeah, more downside could could be possible. Um, in a way, uh, one of my targets got reached, 1977. Brilliant, perfect. My, can we get a test of my other target? Uh, the uh, 1969 zone. Well, let's wait and see. The, the day is still long, so you know we could have that uh, done maybe today. But in case this reverses sharply back up and pushes back above the 50-day EMA and this upside line, yes, there could be a, a, some you know signs of positivity kicking in. But I would prefer to wait for a push back above the uh, above this downside line and this 2,000 level. Uh, silver, uh, this one's getting a nice, beautiful hold up near my target. Great. So, yep, I, you know, we managed to reach my target, the 23, the area between the 23.52 and 57 levels. So now the question is, can we see a further slide? If we do clear this and stay below it, then yes, I'll, I'll aim for the for the 200 day EMA. Simple as that. Around here, we also have the 22.82 territory, which could be a nice, good target for the upside. Um. Although, although I like, uh, you know, pref I prefer, actually, let's put it this way, I prefer this territory for the upside, the area between the 24.6373 levels. Um, I do admit that maybe we'll have to consider this territory right here, the 24.16, just, you know, uh, a little bit earlier, just maybe to capture that up, up move, because depending on how this is going to trade maybe the 50 day ema could approach this area and then you know this could coincide nicely with this level and maybe then uh, this could be a nice good breakout here to the upside but again let's wait and see uh let's see if how this is going to play out but uh yeah um for now for now yeah um maybe I'm, we could see some more downside but a confirmation break is still needed guys i mean until then i'm not really going to do anything with it uh oil just a quick update so again something that i i'm not doing anything with right now as well is oil because again uh do i like it uh yes do i like where it is right now no um it's not really working out for me i need to see clearance of one of these levels so for the upside 74 territory for the downside 69.43 approximately around here and then we could start considering the next uh short-term directional move so for now long story short that's the game plan a uh, corn, a uh, corn, a uh, beautiful move. Look at this. Um, I said to you before, look, if we do fall below the 579.38 territory right here, my next target is the 565.38. Tick. Um, but what I was hoping for to see after that, excuse me, maybe a bit of a retracement here a rebound from this 565.38 but again okay that didn't work out but that's fine because my other scenario is working out because i said to you that if we do drop below this and stay below it i'll go lower and uh yes we've basically violated the lowest point of 2022 there we go uh yeah we cleared that area <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> oh yeah there we go my throat um just a sec <clears throat> no, there we go. So, we cleared uh, that area. Uh, now, what's next? Well, this is where I'm going to aim and target this little hurdle here, the 548.63, which previously acted as a good area of, of resistance. That's like the mm, the highest point of uh, September, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, uh, let me double check. Yep, uh, highest point of September of 2021. Also acted as a good area of uh, resistance back here. Oh, sorry, resistance back uh, area of support back here in the beginning of November. Um, yep, actually the lowest point of November, I would say. Yeah, good, good, good level. Um, so yeah, this becomes a very good level to watch. So let's see if we can reach that. This is what I'm going to aim for initially. And then we will go from there. Uh, initially, I'm going to target that 548.63 territory, and then we will take it from there. Uh, so that's in terms of corn. Cotton, there we go, guys. My Look, I look at these, and I've looked at the, uh, the instruments, these like exotic pairs and exotic uh, commodities. I do like that. I do like to look at them. And uh, yeah. Uh, perfect, um, perfect, perfect breakout. I was talking, I kept on talking about this for quite a while, and there we go. We got that pop, pop. we got that got that pop above the 85 territory, 
and uh, yep we stayed above it as well so now i'm aiming for the 200 day ema if that gets cleared then my next target is the 91.87 simple as that if we fall back below this downside line into this uh, into this triangle pattern then well we will i'll take a neutral stand again ethereum ethereum uh still waiting for this one to make a move so you can see that this hurdle continues to work uh look i'm just gonna be very brief on it um because it's not really doing much um look maybe this could jump around here a little bit you know in, in between these lines but in general uh it seems like from the shorter term perspective we're forming something of a falling wedge so until the upper side of course this this these patterns tend to be more bullish than bearish uh but um until we get a breakout through the upper side we cannot really you know get comfortable with the upside um so while as long as we remain inside the pattern it could continue moving south here so but in order to consider that moving south we need to see a clearance of this uh 1785 territory somewhere around here at the same time a drop below the 100 day ema here shown as the green line could do the trick and we could see this one retest you know testing the lower side of this fall, falling veg pattern overall in general we are still above above this upside line trend above this upside moving moving trend line taken from the low of the 22nd of november of 20, of last year so in general any move lower here could be classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying there uh <clears throat> litecoin so uh litecoin uh good movement here oh there we go my my, my voice is going <clears throat> down a little bit guys do apologize for that <clears throat> okay sorry for the disappearing i had to clear up my throat a little bit here so apologies for that um look with litecoin um basically the uh my barrier here is working out nicely it, it's um it it held nicely it's uh, it's performing well the 94 territory i talked a lot about it and now we're seeing a bit of a decline so so what i wanted to do here uh, is already to draw my fibonacci my beloved fibonacci levels and uh yeah so let me just extend this a little bit like right uh and have the prices there we go so um so basically i am um why why is it like this anyway um basically yes uh what i'm considering here given let's say if this is the the key important resistance barrier right now right that we're watching uh what i'm considering here is maybe a uh, a move towards that 23.6 percent retracement on the fibonacci right here um that's my first target if that gets clear then is the 38 that's what i'm going to apply here um and uh, that's where uh, you know i'm gonna kind of shift my attention to um if yeah if something like this basically then maybe we'll get a uh, maybe a little hold up around here and then we will maybe you know see a nice reversal and push back up so, so at this point um we got that run we got that move i talked about i said that if we break this downside line there is poss poss good possibility that we could see a move higher um if you're looking for further upside on this one then yes a, a push somewhere above that 94.75 territory would be ideal um oh i can see there in a comment uh pt uh, p uh okay let me renovators ah pt renovators yeah there we go pt renovators uh there we go sorry yeah whenever there's no like uh gaps between the letters then it's like you know start you, you start uh reading it like as a you know uh kind of as a very very um slow person but um anyway uh pt renovators look uh gbp and euro usd um the way uh, yeah for sure i mean i'll look into those because th these are the ones that i have here in the list because this is my list here that that i normally go through every every time so every like basically when you when when the video starts and uh i'll have the in the description as well i have the list of instruments that i will be covering during the video so you can check those out as well but uh just like i said in a bit i will get to those in a, in a bit um gbp usd here and euro usd here as well so uh but like i said i have this sequence that i kind of go through and uh yeah um so coming back to this uh, litecoin look good performance good movement here everything so far in line with the idea now the first question is like i said can we reach that 23.6 percent retracement on the fibonacci that's what i'm going to be aiming for that's around the 90 level 
Uh, maybe just a little bit above that. Um, and then we'll go from there. Do Dogecoin. Uh, look, uh, we had some positivity here a little bit. So... I don't know, maybe something happened. Uh, to be honest, I'm not really quite sure. Maybe this is the, um, maybe the good reaction to uh, in the interview of Elon Musk to CNBC. Um, again, mm, well, let's, I don't know. For now, like I said, you can speculate a lot on this, but uh, we had a little jump. Okay, that's fine. Uh, but still, we're below the downside line. And in a way, um, for now, I would say this way, as long as the downside line remains intact, there is still potential for some upside, but uh, sorry, downside. But in this case, I still need to see a drop below that 0 0.0707 territory in order to go further south. Um, if I if I get that move, then yes, great, I will uh, go lower. For the upside, a break of this uh, downside line is needed and then a push above the um, this territory this whole territory actually you know maybe above the 0 0.0771 zone could be ideal so let's wait and see um but again uh the moment i'm ca cautiously bearish so but a, a still a confirmation breakout is needed aud usd guys so very quickly on that one so we had a bit of negativity kicking in initially um that the um maybe there is you know speculation that uh, a further rate hike of uh, for the RBA will, will not be needed. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, for now, looking at this picture right here, um, I would like to see a drop still, a drop below that 0 0.6636 territory in order to go lower. So if I can, if I can get that, then yes, uh, further declines are possible. Uh, at this point, I'm just observing the price action for the upside for me. I would need to see at least a push back above the 50-day EMA right here. And then, yes, we could go from there. Uh, I have this little hurdle around here, the 0 0.6710. Uh, if we do clear this, then, yeah, more potentially more buyers could join in, in inside this range uh, to drag it towards the upper side of the uh, of this formation. Uh, for now, I'm just kind of, like I said, aiming uh, for levels inside the range. Uh, I, ideally, I would like to see a clearance of one of the sides, but hey, uh, let's, let's, you know, it's quite a big range, so quite a wide range, so let's we can try to maybe squeeze something out of these levels right here so this is my game plan for AUD USD for the upside 0 0.6710 for the downside 0 0.6636 AUD JPY just very quickly look I talked about this beautiful boom um we broke the downside line that's great we rebounded from that 200 day EMA first and then broke the downside line so that's perfect and I said to you that if we clear this 91.32 territory right here I'll go higher well I'm gonna stick to my plan and I'm gonna continue going higher as long as we stay above this hurdle if we start dropping back below it um maybe you know we start you know changing in you know the scenarios here but first uh yeah this idea worked out with the downside line it broke it we're still within the the rising channel pattern so okay that's great uh, like i said my next target is the 92.42 territory near the uh highest point of may the current highest point of may by the way and uh, let's see if we can create a new highest point for may guys and let's see if we can test the upper side of this rising channel um jumping into aud cad one of my favorite ones as well and there we go look uh we we're flirting with the lower side of the range i kept on talking about this um we did move lower today but we drifted back to the upside very quickly so let's see if we can get another drop below this if we can Okay, I'll go further south. My next target will be the 0 0.8875 territory, and then I'll take it from there. For the upside, uh, what I would like to see here inside this range, maybe, maybe, just maybe, I would start looking at some higher levels if we do push um, back above this little hurdle. But then I have the problem with the 50-day EMA, which could be a little bit in the way. So, um, hmm. Okay, maybe this level is not the per the most perfect one. Maybe I think it's better to stick to this, the 0 0.9043. But um, if you're like feeling adventurous, then you know you can try to consider this. But then consider the fact as well that you first of all you don't risk everything. You know, don't you don't risk a lot here. If you're thinking that maybe if you'll enter earlier and you know maybe this will travel all the way to the upper side here. Okay, that's a possible scenario, but it's a little bit um, you know. It's a little bit tricky. 
So we try to kind of have our uh, normal, a good risk management here. Of course, we don't risk more than we can afford to lose. That's in any way, guys. Uh, doesn't matter, good position, bad position, or like, or sorry, I mean, good, uh, good setup, bad setup, doesn't matter. You cannot risk more than you can afford to lose. Simple as that. Um, so yeah, for now, um, I'm keeping an eye on this little hurdle right here, the 0 0.8994. I will start looking at some higher levels if we do break it, but then we have a problem, like I said, with these EMAs and maybe this target here as well. So, but again, let's uh, let's go slowly on this. USDJPY, uh, beautiful, uh, beautiful move, uh, beautiful move to the upside. I mean, it worked like a charm. I talked a lot about this and I said to you that Look, 137.91 territory area will be my next good target. Mission accomplished, team, we're heading home. Well, not really, because again, maybe something else will uh, you know, show up good here. But in general, uh, if you remember, I said to you that if we do pop above the 135.30 territory, I'll go higher. You know, congratulations who managed to capture this, guys. I have been talking about this uh, last week, um, and finally it worked out this week. So, this is this is this is what the market does. You know, you have to be patient with it. And uh, if you, and you, like I said, if you think that you know it'll go straight away to your target, yes, when the volatility kicks in, yeah, it could it could, but um, you know, it you have to be patient in a way. Like I mean, I cannot. How many times I will repeat that? I don't know. But um, in general, look, coming back to the technicals, enough enough of this uh, theory kind of. Look, back to the technicals. Okay, fantastic. We reached that target. What's next? Well, next, yes, of course. Maybe this is forming a nice ascending triangle pattern. Let's see if, if it's this one or actually if it's the bigger one right here. Uh, but the most important still is the barrier right this uh, right here. If we do clear it and stay above it, then yes, this increases the chances for a further move north. And then we yeah, we could start aiming for that 139.90 level and then we'll take it from there. For the downside. Now, of course, one thing that is really um I really want to draw here is a Fibonacci, something like around these lines. So basically, maybe a bit of a retracement here at some point could be possible. But look, I'm what I'm considering here is maybe a further move north. It's maybe it's still a little bit too early still to draw a Fibonacci. So let let's let let's allow this candle to you know figure itself out uh maybe we'll get a nice put push again in the test of this 137.92 territory 91 territory um and then we'll see what you know happens after that so maybe we'll get a hold up here and then maybe we'll get that little uh retracement so basically what i need here is i need to see another maybe retest of this barrier to see if it's if it holds or not if it if it does then then I'll draw the Fibonacci and then I'll aim for that 23.6. So and then we'll go from there. Uh oh, whoever put some rockets there um on the on this video, guys. Thank you very much. Honestly, really appreciate that. These these rockets, I know it's a small thing, but they they make my life a little bit more interesting because it's kind of bringing that positivity, it's meaning that maybe, you know, I'm good I'm maybe I'm doing a good job, maybe not. I don't know. But, um, you know, like maybe you like this show, maybe you don't, but, but thank you very much, you know, for, for your comments in general, for your, for your rockets, uh, really, you know, it's really cool. Thank you. Uh, now, uh, oh, my nose is itching today, honestly. So USDCH chef, there we go. Uh, beautiful move, beautiful move, a beautiful move away from the short term upside support line taken from the low of the 4th of May. Okay, that's great. We moved higher. We tested some of these levels of mine. Uh, that's fine as well. We tested that psychological 0 0.90 territory. We broke it, but we failed to uh, stay above it. Um, and we came very close to my other important tar uh, area near this downside line taken from the high of the 3rd of November of last year. Um, so in other words, look, I'm going to still stick to my game plan. I will continue targeting the upside only if we break the downside line and we stay above it. If we don't get that, no, I'm not going higher. Uh, if we break that, then yes, actually, I'm very, I was very ambitious here. Yes, I, my ideal scenario is the 200-day EMA, but let's go slowly on this one. Let's go aim for the 100-day EMA first, and then we'll go from there. For the downside, if we break the upside line here, that could attract more sellers into the game. And uh, yes, this could may change the short-term direction, of, uh, and because at the moment it's to the upside, but uh, then we could still basically stick to 
uh, lower levels because overall we're below this downside line. Uh, GBP USD, guys. So GBP USD. So yeah, PT renovators. Look, um, this one in general. I talked about this previously where I said, look, we are we have this upside line taken from the low, the 26th of September. Now. This upside line is a little bit on the tentative side because we, again, we we have a huge gap here, and you know we only test we dropped lower around here, and that's when we draw you know this upside line. So basically, it's not really the most significant here on this chart. However, however, until yesterday, where we've tested that upside line and we rebounded from it. Um, okay, somebody might say, but hey, maybe we've actually rebounded from the the 50-day EMA. Well, we've rebounded actually from everything here, from this upside line, from the 50-day EMA, from my level, this 1.2435, and uh, yeah, we pushed back up. So basically, in other words, this territory here proved to be quite an important one uh, to, you know, to watch. And uh, let me just grab an eclipse here. So this, I'm going to continue monitoring here, and I want to see if we can get a breakout or not here. Let me just lower this... Uh, yeah, there we go. Something around maybe 10. Yeah, there we go. So if we can clear this territory right there, that's great. Okay, we could go lower, you know, and we could start aiming for the 100 and the 200 day EMA. Look, I don't have any levels here for now because um, I want to see what's going to happen here. If we're actually going to break this territory or not. If we do, then yes, I'm going to take a simplistic approach. I'm going to aim for the 100 and the 200 day EMAs later after if we do get that breakout maybe i'll start con shifting it you know considering some of these levels or maybe this or something like around there but so that's why i don't want to overcomplicate life for now i'm just going to put it right there the 1.18 level from where we rebounded uh, re from where we reversed higher in uh in the beginning of march and uh yeah look if we do clear this territory i will aim to the downside i'll aim, aim for the downside um, now, in terms of the upside, this is where I need to adjust my levels a little bit because they stopped working. Whenever something stops working, you have to readjust it, guys. I mean, don't stick, don't fall in love with your certain levels because if those are not working, then yep, uh, throw them overboard and you know start fresh. So for the upside, what I would like to see here is maybe a push above this initial push above the 1.2546 for the uh, for the beginning um then i'll take i'll see how it goes maybe the 1.2578 could be a nice good target um and then you know i'm gonna go slowly to the upside um at the moment the fact that the pair is trying to go back down again uh that's yeah that's creating a bit of bearishness here um in my world but um i need that confirmation break so basically at this point i'm just observing the price action if I want to consider, you know, some lower levels, I'll I'll keep them, you know, I'll I'll keep it from here, from around that 1.2435 level, uh, if we get a break of it. For the upside, I need to see a, a push above the 1.2546 at least, and then I'll start considering the upside. Uh, GBP JPY very quickly on that one. Look, I, I've picked up on this one previously when I said to you that look, maybe we're forming a nice descending triangle, which uh, could be a bearish indication. But I said that a confirmation break of this lower side of the triangle is needed, and this is exactly why I say th say this because you can see we went higher, we broke the upper side of it, and uh, we've moved moved to the upside. You know, we moved towards my higher levels and. Uh, I talked about this hurdle right here, the 1.172.13. Look, we didn't really reach exactly that level, but it's never the exact level. It's always the um, the area around that level. So if you have a level set up somewhere for yourself, think about it, uh, that it might not be the exact touch. It might come closer to it. And if it came closer to, let's say, missing maybe around 20 pips or something like that until, you know, your level can get rich, you can, yes, of course, you can continue, you know, uh, kind of uh, trying to aim for that. But um, if, if the market is not going, just take your profits and leave, you know, honestly. So, long story short, for now, what do we do next here? Uh, basically, after we've reached that, so after this scenario worked out, now it's time to draw the arrow this way. So basically, if it starts shifting to the downside here a little bit, you know, maybe maybe it goes back down, maybe it falls below the 171 territory somewhere around here. Uh, maybe it will start retesting this broken, you know, this downside line from above. And if you remember in my previous videos, I talked about this and I said that whenever we break a trend line, 
the market somehow goes back, the instrument somehow goes back and retests it from the other side. So uh, in this case, uh, let's see if we can get GBP USD kind of moving um, a little bit lower and maybe retesting, uh, you know, the uh, the this this downside line from above. Now I'm not saying that this could happen today. No, it might be a few day uh, move, maybe even a week's move. So, you know, to just keep that in mind. But if it suddenly reverses sharply to the upside and clears my um, barrier right here, excuse me, uh, then yes, I will get a little bit more excited with the upside. GBP CAD continues to slide. Look, I'm not going to spend too much time on this one. I talked about this uh, yesterday. Uh, GBP CAD, um, we fought, we fell below the 50-day uh, EMA again. Um, can we see a further slide? Well, to be honest, as long as we stay below the 50-day EMA, I'm targeting the 100-day EMA. That's it. For the upside, I would like to see a push above the 1.6920 uh, zone, somewhere around here, in order to get comfortable with the upside. This highlighted territory, yes, you can keep an eye on it. But um, look, we have a very strong, important barrier right here. So that's why I'll take a bit of a, you know, I'd rather take a careful and cautious approach than uh, trying to, you know, you know, Look, because this 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 level here, you have to differentiate uh, between what you want to see and what is actually happening. So, uh, I, me personally, I do have a lot of things that you know I sometimes really want it to happen, and you know I'm thinking, oh, I'm trying to basically find justification for a level which maybe actually doesn't carry any any you know significance. So, just kind of keep that in mind that maybe you know you're 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 playing mind games with yourself. So. For now, yeah, I'm going to aim for the downside as long as we stay below the 50-day EMA. Your CHF, a uh, beautiful move uh, to the downside, further move downside. Um, not the significant one, but the fact that we stay, we're still staying below the 0 0.9745 territory, that's, yeah, that's attracting more, um, more uh, bears to the game. And in general, look, I said to you before that for now, it seems like we could be forming a falling veg pattern. If that's the case, then... Uh, such patterns tend to break to the upside, and, but for that we need to see a break of the upper side of the falling wedge. So are we close to the upper side? No. So that means that as long as we remain inside the pattern, there's still downside potential. Um, sorry, something fell into my eye. Um, but look, as long as we stay below the uh, below the 0 0.97 40, uh, 45 territory, I'm going to continue targeting the downside. And uh, what I said to you previously yesterday as well, that if by any chance we fall below the 0 0.9706 territory right here, um, scrap the whole falling veg idea and just kind of we will you know uh, aim lower because the forthcoming lower low will be confirmed. That's the lowest point of March. A new low for the year will be confirmed. And yeah, this is where more sellers could jo start joining in. Uh, Eurocad, just a quick update on this one. Yes, also drifting further south. So far, so good. Uh, we are um, we are uh, looking at the picture here, the 1.46, uh, 41, 41 level here. Yes, I think, yeah, that's the one. The highlighted zone here, we cleared it. I talked about this and I said that if we clear it, then yes, I'll go lower. My next target will be this 1.4585. We reached that perfect tick. Now the question is, can we go further south? Well, to be honest, I will stick to the downside as long as we stay below the 1.4585. And uh, then the next target is the 200 day EMA. Um, like I said, that's a simplistic approach here on EuroCAD. Um, that's why, um, like I said, I'm not really um, examining anything else here. Just for now, the downside. And yeah, then ideally aiming for the 200 EMA for the upside. Now, this is where I have to readjust a little bit. Uh, this upside line can go. Uh, this level can stay, but I think a new one is needed. So basically for the upside, I would like to see a push somewhere above this 1.4750 territory right here, uh, just to be a little bit more on the safe side. And then, yes, I will start shifting my attention to some higher levels. And finally, your USD guys. Uh, so, so far, so good. Look, I talked about this from the beginning of this week, and I said to you that, look, keep your eyes on this 50-day EMA. If we do retrace after we fell nicely here at the end of last week, uh, if we do retrace back up, then yeah, I'm keeping an eye on something like this, on this scenario where, you know, we could go higher, test the 1.0909 uh, territory, maybe the 
the 50 day EMA, yes, we tested that area around that and drifted back lower. And then I said that my next target will be the 100 day EMA. Tick, 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 and everywhere tick. So uh, the, now we have to relook at this again because first of all, um, I have to remove a level which doesn't work anymore. This one right here, the low of the 10th of April. Um, yep, uh, so I need to get rid of that one. Now the question is, can we go further south? Well, to be honest, I will, I will, right at the moment, I will just take a a cautiously bullish, uh, ca sorry, cautiously bearish approach uh, because um, although we are still trading below this downside line, in a way, the short term trend is to the upside. But I would like to see it drop below this 108 EMA just to be a little bit more on the safe side. Uh, that's roughly a pro around the 1.0813 level on my chart here. Um, for the sake of it, actually, you can keep an eye on yesterday's low near the 1.0810. Um, if we clear that one, I will get rid of this level, no longer needed. I think I'll, actually, I'm gonna, you know what, I do like that. I think I do like this downside scenario right here, this way. So if we fall below the 108 EMA and we fall below the 1.0810, yes, this will confirm a forthcoming lower low, potentially attracting more sellers into the game, and I'll, I'll start targeting that 1.07 territory, somewhere maybe around here. Uh, 1.0713, something like that. Maybe 200 day EMA could be a nice good target. But yeah, uh, that's the game plan for the downside. For the upside, um, yeah, ideally, a break of this downside line and a push up of the 1.0909 territory would be required. But that's only if we, you know, we suddenly reverse higher from this area. Well, if we somehow start shifting more to the right here and we start oscillating here a little bit. Maybe we'll, you know, lower our level here for the upside. Maybe we'll just start stick to the downside, this downside line for a break of it. And then, yeah, we'll go kind of from there, you know. But at this point, guys, um, I'm cautiously bearish. I am leaning towards the downside, but I need a confirmation break here. And in general, um, this move lower could be just classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of buying. Why? Because maybe this could be a nice level here. Maybe this could be a nice upside line, which we would consider... Um, and look at how well it coincides with the 200-day EMA. So, you know, might work out, might not, but, you know, we have to examine all the possible scenarios. So that means that this move lower, which we're seeing right now, could be, a, yeah, as I said, a short-term retracement, uh, a, re a small correction before another possible leg of buying. That, that's how we call it. Um, okay, guys, so, yeah, that's that's it. That's it for this session. That's it for this week. Because as, as I said, next, tomorrow there won't be any uh, daily pitch international. Uh, yep, we'll, I'll resume on Monday. Uh, but yeah, guys, I hope you'll have a fantastic trading day today. Have a beautiful trading day tomorrow. Tomorrow, remember Powell's speech. There we go. Yeah, we'll have a we'll have a bunch of uh, speakers. So yep, tomorrow could be a bit of a volatile day. And look, uh, one thing for sure. If you see that it's not going well, don't. Don't trade. Um, like I said, if you're, for example, up right nicely this week, I've mentioned this already before, basically. If you if you are already up this week, today, let's say, you know, you finished Wednesday and you're you've you've reached my your your target um that you set up uh yourself, then great, wonderful. Don't trade. I don't think that you know, oh, I'll trade a little bit more. Um, you know, maybe I'll get more. The, the psychology changes here. And uh, this is where you'll start, you know, by the end of the week, you'll, let's say you've reached your goal, let's say it's 1%, you know, per week. Um, and uh, then you're, you know, now you're thinking, okay, maybe I'll do a little bit more, you know, okay, um, maybe an occasional trend trade today could be nice. I mean, for a small little profit, you know, just go and take it, but then stop. Because again, if, if Friday, let's say, will be a little bit of a, a little bit on the tricky side. And it, let's say if it's uh, one way traffic uh, because of the speakers, then um, yeah, it could easily take you out and frustrate you before the weekend. And the most more important thing during the week is what? Correct. Prepare yourself for the weekend. <laughs> so yeah, you know, you, you you have to have a nice rest. You have to nice. You have to have a nice rest because in order to come back fresh on Monday, um, re relaxation, guys, is is a very key important part of trading. So don't forget about it. You know, hard work is hard work. Yes, but 
uh, you need to play as well. Uh, so, guys, enough of me here philosophing, but um, thank you very much for tuning in. Thank you very much for watching and listening. I really appreciate your time, guys, your your views, your like. Uh, sorry, not likes, but uh, your rockets. Uh, yep, thank you very much for all that. I really, really appreciate that. You, you, you don't even imagine how much it means to me, but um, yeah, that means a lot. So just to let you know. Uh, thank you very much. Have a beautiful, like I said, uh, time. And I'll see you on Monday, 6 o'clock GMT time. Thank you very much. If you want to continue to please the trading gods, subscribe to our channel for a blessing.